How's it going, everyone? I am Jim Shear. Welcome to Lunchbox. And my guest today, Lars Ulrich of Metallica. What's happening? LB. All right. Is this your first lunchbox ever? It is my first lunchbox. Yeah, I, I made uh, lunchboxes for two of my kids this morning, but <laughs> uh, it's the first time I've been on lunchbox, not made them. Well, welcome. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. <laughs> first question, how long did it take you to create Death Magnetic? Um, from start to finish, probably just north of two years. Um, but in that time, I, I have to say, it, it wasn't a, a continuous... Um, we, for the first time when we were making a record, sort of went on tour while we were making a record. We'd never done that before. It was quite... We, was that the Out of the Studio tour? You, you said they all have silly names like that. Um, but so we would be in here, we would um, write and, and have fun for a couple of months, and then we would, somebody say, come and play in Japan in August, and we would go and play some festivals in Japan, or we would go to South Africa, or we would go and play some shows in Europe or whatever. So it wasn't a continuous two years, and it was actually... I think the idea of, of going out and kind of re-energizing yourself on the road while you're making a record, while you're working on new songs, it's great because you don't get too, it doesn't, the process doesn't get linear. You, you don't get too stuck in the sameness of the process over the years. I'm amazed by all the parts in the album. How do you memorize it? Because there's so many songs, there's not a song under five minutes. Um, there's ups, downs, uh, curves, peaks, valleys. It helps, it helps that uh, I'm the main arranger in the band. <laughs> you just gotta, I mean, it's like, how do you learn your lines when you're doing theater or whatever? I mean, it's just, you just gotta learn it and you just gotta practice it. <laughs> but going on tour, you have like a room set up in the venue yes, where you will practice beforehand. Yeah. Warm up. Yeah, warm up. Yeah, it's, it's, um, well, it's two things. It's, um, we don't play the same set list you know, two nights in a row. Yeah, you ever. still memorize yeah. them. No, we'll, we'll play different set lists every night. So, so every night, there are some songs that we haven't, we haven't played that song in three months. So we have to just run it once to just get comfy with it. That's number one. Number two is that um, usually the songs we open with are quite uppity, quite fast. And so the old shoulders and the legs and the necks and all that, they need a little bit of a, of a kind of a warm up. So when we get up on stage and we start, we've actually been playing for 10, 15 minutes before. So to kind of be in the moment and to be as, as, as ready to, you know, ready to flex as right. possible or whatever you're supposed to do. Now, is anyone allowed in this room while that happens? If you come out with your listen. IFC crew, with your lunchbox crew, you guys would definitely, the now door listen. would open automatically. Are you just saying that for the camera? Because when you come oh, to Nat, no, when you no, come I, to NASA, NASA no, Coliseum, I'll be there. Okay, listen, me I'll and be you, there. Me and you in the tuning room. All right. Well, I have witnesses there, right? See that guy over there? Well, we've got. Yeah, I mean, this okay, is documented. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. Uh, also, I want to congratulate you being uh, on the recent cover of Rolling Stone magazine. Thank you. David Frick asked Absolutely. you a very interesting question. Uh -oh. He asked you, "How long will you be doing this?" And I loved your answer. You said, <coughs> "Charlie Watts doesn't play Whiplash and Damage Incorporated every night." No disrespect, of course. No, but you're sort um, of like setting the precedent for thrash uh, metal bands. Isn't that scary? Uh, <laughs> God help us all, as they say. Um, listen, um, two days ago, I was on a field trip with my 10-year-old, and I found myself throwing a football out on a beach for about two hours. Two days later, I, I can't lift this over my shoulder. I mean, this is scary stuff. I'm 44 years old, and... You know, the hardest working guy on our tour is a guy named Don. God bless him. He's the guy that stretches us, massages us, flicks us back into position or shape or whatever, readjusts us and all that stuff. And um, this will last as long as we physically are capable of it. Mentally, uh, attitude-wise, the whole thing, we're fine. At some point, these battered bodies are going to give out, and um, that's when it will end. And um, when that is... I don't know, but um, obviously we're doing our best to um, be as healthy as we can be, uh, you know, eat, work out. I mean, without it being, I mean, it's not like, it's not athletics here. I mean, we do enjoy a glass of wine and, you know, eat an occasional slice of pizza. But um, we you try to be as on top of that as you can. Uh, back to Death Magnetic. And how many times have people messed up that title? It's a little well, tongue twister you, there. You should hear them in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, call it a, a Back to Basics Metallica album. And it seems like that was the point behind the whole thing. Bringing back the old logo, you got the instrumental back in there, the longer songs. You don't miss anything, do you? 
I, you know, back to basics, I, you know, I struggle with it a little bit. I, it's because um, I take, I'm one of these guys that take things very literally. So when you say back, I'm not much for going backwards, but uh, in the continuing quest forwards and on this forward journey, um, we have certainly incorporated some more elements of our past on this forward moving journey. Which isn't a bad thing. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. And listen, I mean, in our quest to continuously be inspired and, 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 and go into new areas, uh, Rick Rubin said, well, you can also be inspired by what you have done, by your past work. And that was, once we got over that hump, that was a little bit of a mental block. Then um, we realized it was okay to be inspired by your past work. Do you ever get upset when people compare every Metallica release <laughs> to the first four? Um, I, I, I stopped getting upset a long time ago. When you've been in Metallica for 27 years, you have to kind of go through each day with a, an understanding of that, you know, there's a lot of people out there who have a lot to say about what Metallica does. And, um, you evoke passion. That's a good when we, t we find the good in most of it, um, but ever since we um, uh, put you know acoustic guitars on, on, on the song Fade to Black on the second record, everybody's got an opinion, and everybody sometimes has something not so pleasant to say. So you kind of learn to, um, to roll with that. Um, so I, I, I appreciate the people that are passionate about the first four records, and I appreciate the fact that those records are considered so important. But if the bar is measured by your least uh, well, you, you know, the, your least considered work, like say Reload, for people that say Reload. When I hear a song off, off Reload, I go, you know what? That's not so bad. I'll, I'll put Reload up against anybody else's considered worst record. And you know, that's not so bad. So it's, it's, been, it's been pretty cool. I, I'm pretty proud of everything that we've ever done because ultimately over the course of the last 25 years, we've done the best we could in, at any given time and in any given record. And if you can hold your head up high and say that, then I think you're doing okay. Beautiful. Thank you, Lars. Right. Thanks for having me on the Lunchbox. That will, yeah, that will do it for we'll this see, episode of Lunchbox. See you in NASA. And you've heard it here. We will be in the Attitude and Tuning Room, in Nassau Coliseum. Coliseum. It's here, documented on Lunchbox.